In the world of dialysis, access management is very important. Dialysis patients are dependent on having a vascular access, a fistula or a graft, in their arm so they can get dialysis care for many years. Access management needs begin with protecting the vessel of the upper extremity of a person with chronic kidney disease so they can benefit from having a functioning fistula or graft in the future. Basically, kidney disease doesn't start at dialysis. It starts when people have 60% of kidney function. And unfortunately, we don't think ahead of time a lot of times. And in the recent years, we've learned, hey, we need to protect these veins so that patients can live a longer life. And that's where access management needs to begin. Once an access is created, uh, we hope that the vessel matures and grows and thickens uh, so that it can be ready for use. However, along the way, narrowings do occur inside the vein in tortuous areas, in curvy areas, and this has patients run into problem in dialysis with prolonged bleeding or high venous pressures and alarms and bells going off on the dialysis machine. So we bring the patients in for a fistulogram at total vascular care. We run some dye through the vein to diagnose problems, which are usually a narrowing of some sort. These narrowings have to be angioplasty. That basically means you advance a balloon to that area of narrowing, and you dilate that area so that the diameter of the vessel goes back to the original size of the vessel so that blood can flow better and they have no problems on dialysis. This way they get better blood cleaning as well. Once that is done, you run dye again to see if the patient responded to that angioplasty. Sometimes they do not. In the event they do not, we have the ability to place stents. Stents are hollow tubes that go inside the vessel and dilate that narrow area and keep it open longer than angioplasty alone would, hopefully. That is not always true, but that is the intent. As part of what we also do at Total Vascular Care, we do renal sonograms. Sonograms are done to basically evaluate the nature of the patient's kidney disease in some uh, scenarios. One of the most common genetic disorders is a disease called polycystic kidney disease. That would easily be identifiable by a renal sonogram. We also perform ultrasound to diagnose single cysts, stones, any other type of abnormality that may clue us into what is going on with the patient's kidneys. So that is an important part of patient care in patients with chronic kidney disease. Once the patient's kidney function gets below 30%, your nephrologist will refer you for a vein mapping. During hemodialysis, the blood is taken out of a patient through two needles, filtered through a machine, and then returned back to the patient. In order to perform hemodialysis, we need access to a large amount of blood. We use an ultrasound machine to help visualize your arteries and veins in your arm. The ultrasound measures the size and depth of those veins and arteries. Depending on what we find, we can ask a surgeon to help create a fistula or a graft, which actually makes a connection between the artery and a vein. A fistula is made from your own vein. It can be in the upper or lower arm. It lasts many years. It is less prone to infection, and it takes about six to eight weeks to heal, hence why we like to get it in early. A graft is a synthetic tube. It can be straight or in a loop configuration. It can be in your upper or lower arm. It can last years, but not typically as long as a fistula, usually about two to three. It's slightly more prone to infection than a fistula, but not much. Heals only in about two weeks after it's placed. It's good for those with poor sized veins. If hemodialysis has to be started and the patient doesn't have a graft or a fistula in the arm, then they will need a tunnel dialysis catheter. This catheter will go into one of the large veins in the neck, called the internal jugular vein, either on the right or the left. The tip of the catheter actually sits right above your heart. The other side of the catheter comes out in the upper chest, with two ports showing. One port is used to take blood out into the dialysis machine. The other port takes blood back into your body from the dialysis machine after it has been cleaned. These catheters can be left in for several weeks or months. They serve as a bridge to someone actually getting a fistula or graft in their arm. If you have been diagnosed with cancer, your oncologist may consider starting you on chemotherapy. Chemotherapy oftentimes has to be given intravenously, IV, and your blood will be drawn for labs quite frequently. To help deal with these issues, it will be best to place a metaport in your chest. 
A metaport is a circular port that is placed underneath the skin of your upper chest. These are either plastic or metallic and less than an inch in diameter. The port is accessed with a special needle directly through the skin. At Total Vascular Care, we can place a metaport with just local anesthetic on an outpatient basis. No need to be admitted to the hospital. Once the cancer goes into remission and chemotherapy is no longer needed, the metaport can be removed.